So I'm just trying to get this all set up. Okay. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be here tomorrow. And so we're gonna watch originally I was gonna show in the eighties, but it's not to show these seventies music because I I I read something about CD Wonder. I watch CD Wonder. So it's really good. Both of them are good. I think we're gonna watch both the seventies and eighties music. And and most people I thought did well on this. I kind of worked your tail off of. And most people got an A on it. There's a lot of things open. You know, I, I took some points off here and there. What do you have done? Did you get anything done off today? No. So you're sitting at a hunt. You get it to me with more of it done on Monday. That's all that. That's all that you have before. Which one you want to know? I think it's like a Just ask and I'll tell you. Okay. I can do that. Oh, we're just oh, you didn't write it down. We're just trying to write it down. Okay, so this is now out of the house. Oh, thank you. All right. So I want to be as fair as possible. I want to reward you. I went through and found out I kind of guessed. I thought, well, you know, that's not really an answer. You just put down stuff happened. I got a few of those. And so I'm going to go through a few things in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, kind of pick and choose a few things. And I talked about the missile crisis. So there will be, there's going to be some short IDs. How many did I say? 20? Yeah. 20, 24? All right, well, I'm with you if you want. Four. And there'll be one like, and I'll give you big hints next Wednesday. Sound good? No. I want everyone like hints as in I'll tell you your choices. All right? Now do it on Wednesday. Yeah. How many multiple choices? It's gonna be it's gonna be like um, 30 really basic multiple choice and like 30 matching. Fifty to that. We could do 60 multiple matching. Seven. And then four sides in 30 minutes. 42. No, when you see the ones I show, I mean, they're going to be cool. Okay, I promise you, they're going to be very fancy. I swear to you. And if you don't find them amazing, you go down to Mr. Lars and you tell him, you know, EU matters. All right, you get in space. Tuesday, what are we bringing in? All our textbooks, right? If not, you'll be farming and it'll go up exponentially each day you don't have your textbooks, and that will go into the partridge farm. So please bring him in. I got to go. Yeah. Sammy Hall, that was the political machine in New York. The political machine in New York. They. Oh, shoot. Oh, I didn't give you yours. What? Did you see that? And, and the thing is, I gave a lot of time on this. I did. Uh, four review sessions, and then I also came in. I did three of my lunches. I said, if anybody wants to come in, and so if you don't have it done, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a few things on this. Just a few notes. Just really, big. I'm going to go fast. I'm going to try a couple stories here and there. I got to show you a commercial. Um, oh, so the Cuban Missile Crisis will be one of your choices on the short ID. Yeah, so there'll be some notes. Not a lot. It'd be really fast. I this is hard for me, but also I know that you know we ran out of time. We did the test, we did the review packet, we worked really hard, and so it's hard to kind of get our. So I'm just going to pick and choose. And we did Lee Harvey Oswald, didn't we? No. We didn't talk about him at all. No, not really. 
we, we talked about Sandy and Stephanie. We didn't go too far. Into yeah, we're not going to go into details of this. Actually, in the in special topic, I, I like doing a unit on the Kennedy assassination because there are so many conspiracy theories. Some are actually um, are, are really amusing. Most conspiracies would involve thousands and thousands of people. Therefore, by definition, it didn't happen. But Kennedy and Dallas, Texas. So we just know Lee Harvey Oswald is almost certainly the assassin. I, I'm not going to go into details about him, except I should say that he's holding a communist newspaper here, and he gave this picture to a friend of his who was a uh, someone who immigrated from Russia uh, who fled communism, and he wrote down on the back of it, Lee Harvey Oswald, killer of fascists. And he actually tried to assassinate another uh, leader, uh, another public figure named General Edmund Walker. Yeah, he was a he wanted to become famous, and he he became famous. Um, yeah, it, it's a pretty interesting story, but we're just gonna jump. I gotta get to we got the Warren Commission. Oh, I did mention Jack Ruby, right? And it was hot TV. They were flipping back and forth between the actual funeral and um, um, Oswald being taken out of prison. Flipping back and forth, going back and forth. And Jack Ruby to save the family from the pain of a trial. Ruby was, or Ruby assassinated Oswald right there. Ruby went to prison for life, didn't he? Yeah, but he died in prison. He got pancreatic cancer and died 68 in prison. One of the conspiracy theories were that he was injected with cancer to shut him up. You can't do that. It doesn't work that way. It's not like the cancer drug you give people. Yes, there are things that give you cancer, but it's not like they just gotta, here you go, shh, now you die. It doesn't quite work that way. So, we got the Warren Commission. I mentioned it, we got the Great Society, right? And finish the New Deal, civil rights, we talked about these two bills. So I think we're right. Oh, so let me tell you something about the Johnson Treaty. Lyndon Johnson, no president was ever white. He was able to beg, plead, cajole. He got bills passed like no other president. And he was this big man who would bring people in, um, get right in their face, talk to them, jab, threaten them, even pick them up, look them right in the face. Uh, he just had this amazing gift. The problem was, in those things, he would say anything to get a bill passed. And that's what sometimes bite him. But there's all... So there's all these pictures of him just literally like right in their face. And he was just this man of immense ego, um, also self-esteem problems, I think, which is, I think, pretty common with politicians. You know, they're desperate to prove that people love him. And LBJ, everything. You know, Lyndon Baines Johnson. His wife would be, no one even knew her name. She was Lady Bird Johnson. He had two daughters. Linda Bird and Lucy Baines Johnson. Do you see a trend here? He had Beagles. You anybody want to guess what the Beagles' names were? Please have the picture of the Beagles. I'll leave that in there. Yeah, the Beagles right here. Little Beagle Johnson one and Little Beagle Johnson two. Do you see a trend here? Anything? Anything? Yeah, he was in a pretty interesting guy. Good and bad. The pictures don't do him justice. I guess you know. There's one thing you'll find out, and I'm just sorry to tell you, I'm warning you right now. When you get older, your ears keep growing, and your nose keeps growing, and everything else is kind of too short. It's not fair. Someday you too will be. My ears used to be that big, and I'll live like that. I'm going to retire. LBJ, they really started growing. But I got to talk briefly about the election in 1964. So Lyndon Johnson was going to run for president and win on his own terms. And his running mate would be Hubert Horatio Humphrey, made him dress in that. So we have Lyndon Baines Johnson and HQ, Hubert Horatio Humphrey. Now, conservative Republicans took over their Republican Party. It was a conservative insurgency, the beginnings of the modern conservative Republican Party would begin right here in 1964. And Barry Goldwater would be their nominee. Barry Goldwater, A-U-H-2-O. Yes, I know. Ha uh ha. -huh. But of uh, Arizona. And his big thing is he basically all he could talk about was the Cold War. The Cold War, the Cold War. He wanted to blow up. In fact, he talked casual casually about dropping an atomic bomb in the bathroom of the Kremlin. Talked about it all the time. 
But what really got him was when he went to the South, and it's called the Southern Strategy, and he came out against civil rights. He said, we do not need the Civil Rights Bill of 1964. We do not need this. This deprives people of their freedom, even though you're not allowing um, African Americans to participate in commerce. It doesn't matter. And this got them applause, anti-civil rights. And they thought, we can undermine Johnson in the South. Take away Southern Democrats and then anti-communists. He's losing the Cold War. Johnson is not tough enough. This will be one of your choices for the short ID, the Southern strategy. And put it something next to it. Nixon with preference. Richard Nixon. So, and values. The Democrats were not doing true American values. This will be called the cultural issue, or I'm sorry, the social issue down the road. And today, American politics are dominated by what they call the culture wars. And it has been very effectively used against Democrats. And Democrats have never had an answer. So, but his big thing was, oh, here it is, LBJ, they're gonna take away the jobs from good white people and give it to black people. This was the strategy, and it always oh, it effective. Not in this election so much. Johnson, though, ran, I'm going to provide you rights. I'm going to end poverty. We're going to make the United States a better place. But he had to show he's tough on communism. Oh, we're going to jump right here. So the Tonkin Gulf incident would happen during the election. And this was Johnson's way to prove he was tough on, on, tough on uh, communism. South Vietnamese commandos were attacking North Vietnam. We were desperate. They were losing South Vietnam. South Vietnam was going to fall. And remember, the whole thing about Vietnam was to keep two Vietnams and a pro-American dictatorship, essentially, in the South. The USS Maddox was supporting these commanders. This was top secret. Nobody knew the US was doing this outside of a small little group inside the Pentagon. This was one of these, looking back at it, foolish moves. Well, North Vietnamese torpedo boats, small ships, attack. The Maddox. Why? In retaliation for this commando raid. What are commandos? Do you know what a commando is? In the United States, you think of them now as like a ranger or special forces. They're commandos. Johnson, they actually, the Pentagon begged him to, to, to strike. Johnson kind of refused. Johnson was saying, well, we can't let people know about this. So two days later, two days later, They sent a second operation, two days later. This time, they reported, we're being attacked. We're being attacked, and there's no commando raid. We're attacked. There's torpedoes in the water. Pretty soon, there's reports of hundreds of torpedoes. It was actually the Maddox and another ship called the Turner Joy. Torpedoes in the water. They're avoiding it. In fact, they begin to fire on these torpedo boats, and the Turner Joy actually hit the Maddox. They were so desperate. Johnson was told we were under attack, and this he ordered retaliation. U.S. carrier planes would strike five North Vietnamese bases, so the U.S. greatly escalated. But he escalated, then pulled back, and said, "I'm tough on communism, but I'm not going to blow the world up." Goldwater talks about blowing up the Kremlin. I'm for peace. That's the talking golf resolution. What would come out of this is. He would get a blank check, and that's what you got to get down, a blank check. And what he said was, Congress said, the president can do anything he wants to stop aggression. And this would be the justification for war. Only two senators voted against it, every member of the House, including the Senate Majority Leader, which was Mike Mansfield of Montana. They all voted for it, a close ally of Johnson, very liberal Democrat. Montana used to be significantly different. And it was all based on lies. While this is going on, reports of hundreds of torpedoes in the water, word got back, maybe not so many torpedoes. Maybe there weren't any torpedoes. Maybe they weren't, there weren't any North Vietnamese boats. Maybe we weren't attacked at all. 
nobody knew for a while. But Johnson said he knew we were attacked. He would find out there was no intercept. Did not, did not happen. If everyone got that. That was a total lie. In fact, Johnson would say, "We're shooting at a bunch of damn flying fish." It didn't happen. The whole thing would be based upon a lie. That should remind you of something. The Spanish-American War. The main blow up of the United States said that we. Um, that Spain blew it up. No. Spain did not. We did not know that. That's a lie. You say something is true and you know, don't know. You're lying. This was a lie. In 2003, the United States is going to invade Iraq. And the number one justification, the president of the United States said Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. Did they? Well, not only no, he lied. Because he said, I know for a fact they do. And he did not know on a lie. And tens, uh, thousands of Americans and hundreds of thousands of Iraqis would die because of that. And it's still hell there today. Yes? Do they know where the lies of the second attack came from? Like, who started that? A bunch of radar operators. It was at night and they were scared. So they sent back word it was an attack. And it had to go to first Subic Bay, which is in the Philippines, and then to Honolulu, and then to San Francisco. Then, So you imagine it's trained. And what happened is there's an attack. And everybody who got it, they passed out a slightly bigger attack. Because everybody wanted to be the one to say it was. They knew that's what they wanted to see. And you ever play a game of telephone or telegraph, you do the list or, you know, ever right. done that? And now it's amazing how quickly, that's kind of what happened. But then the news came back from, um, from the Navy. They don't think it was an attack. And Johnson, when he found out, sat up. Why? So Johnson could look tough. And he could say, they want to blow the world up, and I want to save the world. And that's going to lead to the most famous commercial in American history. It only ran once. It only ran once. But Johnson can portray, I'm the peacemaker who stepped on communism while Goldwater wants to destroy the world. Have you ever seen? You want to see the commercial? You excited? I for president. Yes, I for president. I for president. I for president. You like I? I, like. I couldn't help it. One, two, three, four, five, seven. These are the stakes to make a world in which all of God's children can live are to go into the dark. We must either love each other or we must die. Vote for President Johnson on November 3rd. The stakes are oh, the stakes. too high for you to stay home. One time, but they were played on the new, on the three, there are only three networks back then. And it ran and ran and it worked. Johnson's gonna win one of the biggest landslides in history. The biggest popular vote landslide to this day. Johnson got a mandate. The Great Society was popular. I mean, the country was significantly more liberal. Let me phrase that. Liberal politics were accepted by most of the leadership class. Economically, most people are actually pretty liberal to this day. Culturally, that's a whole new story. But do you see it? Do you see it? The Southern strategy. It worked. Southern Democrats began to vote Republican. And this will begin a trend that will basically make the South, the South Republican by 1980. Why? Civil rights, anti-civil rights. And today, the Republican Party is a Southern party. And it wasn't like that before. I mean, today, the Republican Party. And so the Republican Party that controls the uh, Montana 
the leadership of that party is subtle. It's really interesting how that happened in my lifetime, not so much in yours. So right after the election, there was no voting rights act. And civil rights, uh, the civil rights movement began a march in Selma Montgomery for voting rights to force President Johnson to finish what he, what he promised. They were brutally attacked by the police, National Guard, I'm sorry, uh, local police, state police, and local thugs. Brutal attack. Johnson, who was like, we got the Civil Rights Act. Why don't you be patient? Give me time. Would be forced to act. But the problem was this. If he went for civil rights, but South Vietnam fought. In fact, he said, they're going to shove this right up my work. In fact, one of his more famous lines where he wanted to hide Vietnam, he wanted Vietnam to go away. Johnson said, if your mother-in-law has three eyes and one is in your, and one is in the middle of her forehead, you don't keep her in the living room. And you can't argue with that logic, right? Vietnam is the mother-in-law with three eyes. And here we look at it. Okay. I'll tell you more stories about Johnson. Johnson's an amazing guy. So he escalated in Vietnam. He began a three year bombing campaign of North Vietnam. Remember the old things that were civil one the South? It's called Rolling Thunder. That's an American F 4 Phantom. Not a great fighter plane, but a great all around plane. Engine smoked. So when I was in high school, um, when I was still hoping my eyes would not keep getting bad, but they were never good enough, but I kind of wanted to be a fire pilot, but I kept wrong. And I can't fit. And one of the ways I found out was, I knew I was probably too big, but I sat in a simulator for an F4. And I couldn't fit. And <laughs> I was doing this. And you know, if you had to eject, you'd lose your feet. That made landing really difficult if you landed on the parachute. So, so that's one of the reasons. And then, so you have to be about 5'11 is about your max height. You mean you can be taller, but then you might lose your toes. So if you think about being a fighter pilot, different pilot, like a bomber pilot can be a little bit bigger. Okay, so, and then all you need to know is this. I just put down here in 65 to protect the bases, Johnson sent in the Marines. In 65. So this is the big escalation. They sent it to the Marines in this base called Da Nang, which is in the south coast of South Vietnam. They actually hit the beaches like it was an invasion, like it's Iwo Jima. They were met by uh, young South Vietnamese girls with flowers. It was this surreal thing. But once he did that, you have US, regular US troops in Vietnam. So Johnson could say he's looking tough. I'm not sending troops in to go to war, but what's going to happen? The Viet Cong starts lobbing mortars at him, and thus escalation begins. Once he did this thinking, I'll get the Voting Rights Act passed, he committed troops. It's one of these tragedies, like a Greek tragedy, where you know it's wrong, but it seemed to work in the short run, and it did. Johnson proposes the Voting Rights Act, Jeff is committing forces, and it passed. It passed. It seemed to work. We escalate in Vietnam. It gets the public behind him. It gets the pressure off. The problem is, how do you get up? By the way, similar things happening in Israel. The government of Israel is very weak. Their, their, their prime minister, is, if he gets out of office, will be convicted of taking bribes. And so what are they doing? Escalate. It gets public support. And who's suffering? The poor, wretched refugees. I didn't mean to be alliteration in the Gaza. So he committed ground forces because of the Tonkin Gulf. And so what are the reasons? Just really quick. He thought, if I commit and look tough, I'll save the great society. Kennedy said Vietnam was important. So we save it that way. You want to see act for president again? 
And he also said, if we're going to defend, remember West Berlin had just put the wall there? If we're going to defend West Berlin, we have to defend Vietnam. And so that's going to be the big reasons. I might give this as one of your choices. LBJ's reasons, sound good? One of your choices for a short ID. But what did it lead to? I think you might see the problem. He wanted to save the Great Society. Yet he, keep, he kept a lot of the costs secret because he didn't want people to know. You know. That's why they didn't call it the National Guard. They didn't call it the Reserves. What did they do? They increased the draft. And they drafted more young people. What did young people do? That'd be the beginnings of the anti-war protests, but also wealthier kids to get out of the draft. How could you get out of the draft at first? You went to college. All of a sudden, college enrollment went up dramatically. You got married. When they got rid of the marriage department, if you had children, so you have all these people all of a sudden having children right away. If you, in fact, the last election, the last presidential election, Trump had, I think, eight deferments to go to college. I mean, so he didn't have to go, um, go to Vietnam. And Biden had four. So they could avoid going. I don't blame for go avoiding going, but then they would turn around and say, I would have went, but I was, you know. No, just say you didn't want to go. Say you thought the war was wrong. That really annoys me when they try to then make up a story. Uh, Trump would make up a thing about bone spurs. I have bone spurs. You probably all have bone spurs. And then uh, Biden said, made up something about asthma. So let's just put it this way. The, the, the legacy of the Vietnam War is a long one, especially people trying to avoid the way they really thought to look tough later on. So that, so it seemed to work. You have Medicare, which is health insurance for the elderly. Medicaid, which is health insurance for low income, but every state's different, so that's a really complex system. And the Voting Rights Act. All these programs, Pat, it seemed to work. And that's the point. It seemed to work. The problem is, how do you win a war in Vietnam? No one had any idea. They were trying to fight a war in West Germany and or a nuclear war. They had no idea what they're doing. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, well, we'll never be in that situation again. No, we had no idea what we're doing in Iraq in 2003. Not, not even the remotest clue. In fact, they purposely quit training for guerrilla war in 1987. So in 2003, we put those poor young men and women into a situation that was hell on earth. So here's the commander of all US forces in Vietnam, General Westmoreland, a World War II hero, uh, considered to be brilliant. He had to fight guerrillas. And then as soon as the US started sending troops, pretty soon US sent more, US sent more. North Vietnam started sending troops. They just matched the escalation. So it's all fighting in South Vietnam. And let me give you very quickly the strategy, search and destroy. If the guerrilla war and guerrillas will fight, and then when a, a larger force comes, what do they do? They go back into the jungle. This is the same thing that happened when the United States, the, the, col the colonists fought the British in the Southern strategy. So this is my very quick version of this. By the way, special topics. I do a big thing on Vietnam. Vietnam is just a fascinating story of how they fought. But what we would do is we would send small groups of soldiers into the jungle. And about one out of 50 soldiers were actually in combat in Vietnam. Most were support troops. So the troops that are actually in combat, their casualties were really high, mental and physical casualties. This takes a bigger toll than even World War II. Because what does a gorilla look like? Anything. Yeah. So you can be attacked anytime. So you can never, your mind can't shut down. But we're sending them into the jungle because gorillas would hide in ambush. And so we would send them in, hoping what would happen to them? They'd get ambushed. Can you imagine how hard that would be on morale? And then we would use our superior firepower to blow away parts of the jungle. That was the plan. Did it work? A little bit, but how do you know? So they would literally count the bodies. This is them called tunnel rats going into a tunnel, Viet Cong and Norbian Bijou tunnels to supply things. 
there are people willing to do it. We would count how many people they killed compared to how many people we lost and say we're winning. And you wouldn't get promotion unless you get very high kill ratio. So they exaggerated body counts. The fighting was horrible. I remember in Iraq, uh, there was an officer who said, yes, we're going to use search and destroy in Iraq. And people said, no, that failed so miserably in Vietnam. You got to know your public relations. But the big thing was firepower. They, they cordoned off areas. Why is this doing this all the time? These are bomb, 750 pound bombs from B-52. They just would bomb areas, assuming there'd be guerrilla activity. By the way, bombs can't tell who's a guerrilla, who's a civilian. And if you bomb area and kill civilians, what are you creating? More what? Enemies. Huh? Enemies. Yeah, more guerrilla. Same thing happened in the Southern strategy when Britain did that, destroyed farms of colonists and created more hatreds. This is artillery fire support bases. We, we use hundreds of gallons of napalm, which is jelly gasoline, which burns on impact. This was invented in World War II, dropped on Japanese cities. It is technically illegal now. The US signed a treaty saying it, we can't use it, but we just changed the name and still use it. We call it fuel air munitions now. But this will be one of the most famous pictures of the Vietnam War. And it's actually a South Vietnamese napalm attack. But obviously, the Americans were doing fire support and supplying them with the weapons. But this little girl, her clothes were burnt off by napalm. And they're fleeing this in the background, the smoke from a napalm attack on a South Vietnamese village. And these are civilians who were killed. Has anyone ever seen this picture before? It's in black and white, which is, she's horrifically burnt. Horrifically. But you can't see it because it's black and white. Yeah, the clothes just all burnt off. But they're all in just agony. She's still alive. She survived a horrible scar. So the point is, napalm can't tell who the good guy or bad guy is. And by the way, who's the bad guy? Uh, we also use gallons of Agent Orange. Ever heard of this? Isn't it the same thing as napalm, basically? Close. It's an herbicide. And they thought they could kill the jungle and work with the Viet Cong pine. And it had orange bands around the big barrels that came in, so they called it Agent Orange. And what it did is, it was a carcinogenic. It killed uh, so many American soldiers um, um, were in the jungles. They got Agent Orange dropped on them. They too, they got cancer. Millions of, of Vietnamese, and um, it also created horrific birth defects. So my uncle was in Vietnam. He uh, he was an electrician. You know, you got that electricians there, and he got twice. He got Agent Orange shot, and he died. Uh, Camp. He died of thyroid and uh, colon cancer 28 years ago. It took a while, it took about 20 years, but yeah, it was Asian. So while this is going on, we have a war protest and there's a real cross section of society. There's going to be a real successful movement by Nixon to portray them as a bunch of hippies and drug addicts, but it was a real cross section. And then there were counter protests. And some of the counter protests would get quite violent. So I love this one University of Vietnam peace protest. And then we have every time it's just something that just makes me laugh. But, uh, but most of the United States was for the war. And Johnson thought he could, could kind of. Just show enough of a victory, escalate, but try to keep it as small as possible. Eventually, over 500,000 U.S. troops would be there and show that they're winning. But Johnson, I got to show you one thing. As the war got worse, he got gallbladder surgery. And back then, when they gave you surgery, it was tough. Gallbladder surgery now is a cut about that big. Back then, it's about that big. And uh, uh, so they cut that out. And he was one of those guys, he couldn't help. He wanted to show all the doctors. I also want to prove he didn't have a heart attack. Look at my star. One of the most famous cartoons of that era would be they turned the Vietnam into the star. Isn't that a clever cartoon? Isn't that a good one? By the way, the cartoon that didn't have fun with his nose and ears. So this is the same time 
They were at the time of the long, hot summers. And sometimes they're going to be called race riots. But what happened was there's still segregation. And de facto means it wasn't necessarily the law, but there's still segregation in the North. There's huge economic differences between um, whites and blacks and whites and non-whites. Huge economic difference, which exists to this day. It's even actually bigger. And so it was really hard to do economic justice. Sure, they could get rid of Jim Crow laws. The civil rights did that. The law did that. But how do you deal with the fact that blacks were not allowed to live in most uh, middle class and upper class neighborhoods in northern cities? Just simply not allowed. How do you deal with that change in wealth? And most people, their wealth comes from homes. That is why today, the average black family has about one-tenth to one-thirteenth the wealth of the average white family. And it starts from home ownership. Homes are wealth. It's a big deal when you have a home. It's also a big deal when you lose that home. So, while these are going on, and this would feel a conservative backlash. Look what happens when you give them rights. And that was said all the time. Uh, my wife's racist uncle said that to me a couple years ago about said, remember Newark? And so this conservative backlash, we're giving aid to them. And this was big. And so this would help fuel this conservative backlash that would grow in the 1970s. And so much of our politics would be today. And so here is the, this was against, uh, against the efforts to integrate schools. This one is 64, race mixing is communism. And then, he's he, he just such a nice boy. Of course, that when you're that age, it's your parents aren't sure very proud of that. Parents probably made the sign for him or told him how to make it. But this is a big backlash. You see the same backlash you can see in the war movement and the civil rights. Or the, so, at the same time, an un, I mean, chaos happened. Okay, Sweden thought to do a sociological experiment in 1968 if they had all the stop like reverse and red men go and green men stop. And they wanted to see what would happen. And so in Stockholm, they did that. They called it, anybody want to try the Swedish word for this? Looking. Nobody? Nobody? Needless to say, chaos ensued. <laughs> that just made me laugh. What a great experiment. We should try that here. Was that kind of what happened to the Vigilante Parade? Isn't that kind of the lineup? It seemed like that almost. And China would do it, called it the, the, um, the Great Leap Forward. They tried it too. But let me get to a couple things really quick then after that. In 1968, and this, there will be a question on this. In 1968, the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese were going to try this massive offense. They were going to attack. Oh, I'm sorry. Lyndon Johnson had been saying, we're almost out of the war. We're winning the war. There's light at the end of the tunnel. It's almost over. It's almost over. But then the Viet Cong did a surprise attack. Now, this is the, the Lunar New Year, which was called Tet, which is a big holiday. And Tet, they would do kind of a, a ceasefire, even though it wasn't official. And they were going to attack every base, every city, spear them, uh, try to get an uprising. Try to get an uprising. Well, the attack didn't go well. It, no uprising happened. It failed. It completely failed. Arguably, this was the biggest victory of the war for the United States and the South Vietnam. In fact, the South Vietnamese forces actually uh, probably performed the best they ever performed. But if the people of the United States are being told over and over again, we're winning the war, it's almost over, we're going home by Christmas. And then they do this kind of attack. It doesn't seem like we're winning. This seems like they're much stronger than we thought. And then there's fighting in the capital of Saigon. Actually, U.S. bombers and artillery are just free firing into the capital city of Saigon, which is a town of 3 million people. And the U.S. embassy was even attacked by Viet Cong guerrillas. And the bottom floor was taken until they would be rooted out. Uh, 
Uh, very weird. And then on the streets of Viet Cong, and this was on NBC TV, but also an AP reporter was here. A suspected Viet Cong guerrilla was captured by the Viet Cong, but actually the police of Saigon. And the police chief of Saigon summarily executed. And this was shown on NBC TV. Now, this is back when they had to film it, develop film, send it back to the US, and they stopped it right at this moment. But that is the right moment where you shot him, and you can watch it. It's horrific. This guy's standing there, the police chief is kind of standing this, and he's walking and shoots. Does this look like victory? No. And the whole thing is public opinion turning against him. All right. So Monday will be the 70s. Tuesday, review book, and then 80s and 90s, and then we'll do final. Sound good? Okay. Oh, that's the old one. <laughs> oh, no. This one kept this one on the library. Oh, okay. So, that's not a good Okay. Yeah, the new one we got turned into the library. Thanks, Marcus. You got your old tea. Monday, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which I've done. The philosophy. Yeah. Oh, you want me to get ready right now? I mean, you get you get some credit. Right. We'll see you. Right. Yeah, I'm ready. You got to put him in the river. We'll see you. Why are we get tardy? Did you meet her tomorrow? No. Oh, you won't be? No. Meet her tomorrow. I won't be here tomorrow. Are you going to meet? I'll leave my practice. I forgot to tell somebody when I have a. The movie online. Yeah, it's pretty Okay, so let me just show you this real quick. Just in case the sub has trouble. Do you know who the sub is? It was a name, I didn't know who it is. So I don't know. Okay. So if you go on my webpage, John Parker. So there's the Okay, so you click that. And then <laughs> Black was probably the most important culture. Oh, so it's just like that. Second, you can slide it over. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. Slide it over. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they'll let it do it, but if not, no, I appreciate it. Okay, yeah. Is that it for me? Africa, yes. And you have a mark for you too? No. Oh. Beautiful. back on but Monday or tomorrow I'm gonna be gone. Secret mission CIA and so but I'm gonna be gone so um I know you know how to act around that stuff so, but I'm just you know I expect you to, to, to be in very polite it's not even part of those acting techniques and I know that's true. Please match you again. Uh, Put you on the spot, aren't I? Just go. Who's your math teacher? 
You can at least study all that. Yeah. I just hmm? I just might have to. You had enough dramatic, serious. 